So now let's begin with the secret of the golden flower. Master Lu Tzu said, that which exists through itself is called the way, Tao. I think we could give a whole series just on this one line. This is so deep. That which exists through itself. Now, everything that exists in the ordinary sense does not exist through itself. It has a cause or an aggregate of causes. For example, each of us has a mother and father, and each of them has a mother and father, and so on, back, back, back. No one can trace out the original human being. There are legends, there are theories, but we really don't know our origin. Yet, we can deduce that there must have been an original human being. Because all human beings come from some parents. So in the same way, everything that exists in the ordinary sense has some condition, some cause, some origin. Nothing exists independently. And nothing exists permanently. It all comes into being, exists for some time, and then disappears. This is the wheel of birth and death, samsara, the wheel of life, if you want a positive view. <laughs> but life is the cause of death. Existence is the cause of non-existence. Being is the cause of non-being. You see, everything has a complementary, everything has an opposite. For every yang, there is a yin. For everything masculine, there is something feminine. For everything that flows in a process of manifestation, there's a corresponding process of unmanifestation. And you can't get away from this. In order to enjoy happiness, there has to be sadness. Otherwise, how would we know it's happiness? In order to perceive light, there has to be darkness. In order to feel pleasure, we have to feel pain. That's just the way it is. And the way it is, is Tao. Now, everything that exists has to come into being and go out of being through Tao through the cycle of life and death. And this, in Buddha's teaching, is called Paticca Samupada. We've gone over this so many times in previous videos. I'm not going to get into it now, but you have to go back and check it out for yourself. Paticca Samupada is very technical. It's very complicated. Uh, most people get it wrong. In fact, most Buddhists don't even know that it exists, <laughs> yet it's the core and the actual engine of the Buddha's teaching. Well, how do we become enlightened? Well, the process of becoming, in general, has to be understood, and then turn to the purpose of enlightenment. So, this is very complex, and it's actually a tangent to our real subject, so I'm just going to skip over it. But I want to say that the Tao, or the wheel of birth and death, the process of being and non-being, exists on a higher level. It has no cause. It is not conditional. It exists through itself, and that's Tao. So within the Tao, you have the yin and the yang. Yang means masculine, outflowing, becoming, being. Yin means feminine, inflowing, dark, going out of being. 
Both have to be there. And both make a flow, a process, a vortex. We were talking about vortex theory in the previous series. You might want to go back and look at that again. But again, it, it, it's not an important thing as far as our process in Secret of the Golden Flower. So I'm not going to go into it in detail. But you should know that everything that exists is on this wheel. Uh, this incessantly turning wheel of birth and death. Coming into existence and going out of existence. As a cycle. So what is Tao? Well, Tao is a mystery. No one can know it. Tao is beyond mind, beyond words, beyond concepts. We know it has to exist because other things exist. Huh? They come into being because of it and they go out of being because of it. But the Tao itself never comes into being nor goes out of being. So can we really use the word exist to describe Tao? No, not in the ordinary sense, but in the sense of absolute existence or transcendental existence, yes. It's a different kind of being. It's an unconditional being, uncaused being. And that becomes the first cause of all other types of being. So we're going to be talking about Tao. And Tao is that which exists through itself. Tao has neither name nor shape. Huh? In the process of Paticca Samuppada, name and form is a critical step. Name and form has to be there for consciousness to exist. Without name and form, consciousness cannot come into being. Name and form is the requisite condition for the arising of consciousness. This is from Buddha's teaching. And from Tao we know that yin and yang are there in proportion in every arising. So if there's no name and form, there's no yin and yang. See, if Tao is beyond name and form, uh, then we can't say that it exists in the same sense. And yet, it has to exist for anything else to exist. So, here we go. We're starting to talk about things that cannot be expressed in words, that are not subject to our process of logic and reason, that are beyond conceptual understanding. However, Tao can be experienced. And that is what we're doing in Secret of the Golden Flower. We're actually tuning into and experiencing Tao in and of itself, separate from its existences and non-existences that come from it. Now it goes, it is the one essence, the one primal spirit. It's the essence of everything. Without the essence, things would not be what they are. The essence of an existence, of a thing, is being. Without being, the thing doesn't exist. It may have all kinds of other qualities and activities and energies and so on. But without the essence, it's only an idea. It's not an existence. So here we have something which is beyond existence, and yet it has kind of a super existence, huh? that is the cause of all other existences. Although it is beyond name and form, and it's the primal existence, the essence, the primal spirit of everything, yet it does not come into being. So here we have a logical paradox, <laughs> first of many <laughs> that we'll encounter in this subject. What to uh, do or what to think of this Tao, how to realize it, how to understand it. Essence and life cannot be seen. Well, you say, wait a minute, 
I can see so many people running around, animals, insects, plants. They're all alive. That's life, right? I can see that. Well, not exactly. Let's talk about death for a minute. At the time of death, the body is there, all the organs are there, the blood is there, everything is there. What happens? What's missing? Life. The primal spirit. The primal spirit is pure awareness. We all have it, or we all are it. This pure awareness, which has no name nor form, which does not come into being, <laughs> does not exist in the same sense as ordinary things. And yet, it is the foundation on which our existence rests. So we ourselves are each an example of this primal spirit. We ourselves are, in one sense, Tao. You might want to say, that means we're all God, that means we're all one. No, not exactly, because I have my existence, my awareness, my consciousness, you have yours. They don't overlap ordinarily, unless we attain self-realization, unless we attain emptiness. Now, this primal spirit is a kind of emptiness. It's a kind of space, an opening, a non-being, where things show up. And then we say, oh, I'm aware of this, I'm aware of that. But what about being aware of awareness? See, that's real meditation. When we're aware of awareness, when we are identified with the primal spirit in ourselves, that's enlightenment. Sounds really simple, right? <laughs> but trying to attain it. And of course, everybody's going to say, well, how? How do you do that? And of course, that is absolutely the subject matter of this whole series. And like we discussed last time, it's a one-step process viewed from the top. Once you realize Tao, once you become enlightened, and then you look back at the process you used to attain it, you say, oh, well, that was simple. Just turn around. <laughs> Instead of looking out at the world, look in at the essence. Instead of looking at the things that our awareness reflects, Look at the awareness itself. This is meditation. This is enlightenment. So beyond that, essence and life cannot be seen. They are contained in the light of heaven. The light of heaven cannot be seen. It is contained in the two eyes. Now this is deep, and if we understand it properly, it becomes the foundation for the entire teaching, the entire process, okay? The light of heaven, the primal spirit and the essence are contained in the light of heaven. What is the light of heaven? Well, it is the awareness itself. The Tao is pure primal spirit, pure awareness, and so are we. But yet we're individuals. Huh? We're one, yet we're separate. Achinta beda beda tattva. We are one, but we are separate. We are single, but we are many. It's impossible to understand with the mind. Yet it can be experienced. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to set up this experience so we can realize it for ourselves. Now, the light of heaven cannot be seen. Why is that? Well, consider ordinary light for the time being. Ordinary light, as it passes through space, cannot be seen. Huh? There are so many stars in the sky, so many galaxies, 
clusters of galaxies, and they're all emitting light very energetically. But as that light passes through space, it cannot be seen. It can only be seen when it reflects off of something, when it hits an object and is transformed by that object and re-emitted. That's called reflection. You can see my face here talking and the background and so on because there's light reflecting off of it. But you can't see the light as it passes through the air. You can only see it when it hits something. So the light of heaven is even more subtle. It cannot be seen. It cannot be seen until it hits something. So this is a trick. Uh, this is a technique. Actually, there are many, many techniques hidden symbolically in the text. And we're going to try to bring those out as we go through the book. Uh, we may not even finish the book. It doesn't matter. I didn't finish the book either. <laughs> I got enlightened fat, too fast. <laughs> this is a powerful process because it's simple. Anyone can do, anyone can understand this process. Uh, turn around the light. So what is the light? Well, the light is awareness. The light of heaven is the light that comes from the thousand-petaled lotus, the golden flower, the seventh chakra. Huh? And this light is always shining, day and night, waking and sleeping. This light is there. But ordinarily, we're not aware of it. We're not aware of it unless we turn the light around. Now, I'm going to give you one very simple technique. Go in a dark room. Close your eyes. Wait about five or ten minutes for all the after images on your retina to dissipate. You may have to cover your eyes. If the room isn't completely dark, you might have to put something over your eyes so there's no outside light, no ambient light coming in at all. Okay? Now, first, try to look as if you were looking at your finger, as if you're holding your finger in front of your face and looking at it. Huh? Your, your eyes are closed but you're looking about one foot away as if you were looking at your finger. Now, if you concentrate your mind, now when I say concentrate, I mean narrow the consciousness, okay? Narrow down your consciousness until that's all you're thinking of, until that's all you're aware of, is that looking at that point in space where your finger should be. Now, if you do this with full concentration, you'll see light. It may just be a flash of light. It may just be a tiny little light like this, or it may be a bigger light. Lots of ways that this can manifest. So, once that light is visible to you, then instead of looking at the finger above, in front of your face, Look at the third eye. Look at the third eye from the inside. Now, the, what is the third eye? The third eye is Agnya Chakra, huh? the unknowing, the mind. Why does mind want to know? Because mind doesn't know. <laughs> mind cannot know. <laughs> mind wants to know. So it goes out through the eyes to try to understand, to try to see, to know. But what we're going to do is we're going to turn around the energy and look inside at the primal spirit. How do we do that? Well, there's a couple of tricks. One trick is, okay, 
once you are looking at the third eye from within and you're seeing light, then before we narrowed down the consciousness and concentrated the attention on this one point, now we're going to open up the awareness, still looking at the same place, huh? still looking at the light, but open up the awareness, open up the vision, as if you were looking in your peripheral vision. Just a more word of explanation. You can look at something narrowly and concentrate, or you can look at your wide vision and see the whole field of view. So as you're looking at the Agnya Chakra from within, looking at the light, then widen the peripheral vision until you see the whole field. And the whole field should be full of light. If not, it means you're just not ready to see it yet. It's okay. Don't worry about it. But if you do see it, <laughs> congratulations. You are seeing the reflection of the primal spirit in the mind. So this is a technique I'd like you to try. Let me know if you have any problems with it. A lot of people are going to say, I don't see anything. Well, that's okay. It means you're not looking the right way, that's all. You're looking out. You're not allowing the energy to flow in. The uh, concentrating the mind makes the energy flow out. Widening the vision allows the energy to come in. See, when you're focused, when your vision is staring at one point, then the energy is flowing out. You're looking. But when you have a full view of your peripheral vision, then you're seeing the energy is coming in. And we'll give more techniques later. If this one doesn't work, something else will. <laughs> but try to understand, this is reversing the flow. And this is the most important technique in this whole series. In fact, reversing the flow, we'll discuss this in detail later, Reversing the flow is the essence of all meditation techniques. And it is the way that enlightenment actually occurs. <laughs>